Hello and welcome to another Yellowfin University video. In this video, we'll be talking about JavaScript charts again. We'll be opening up the JavaScript chart editor and we'll talk about one area. We'll talk about the three functions that you'll immediately see as soon as you open the JavaScript editor. Um, you know, we were going to do a couple different areas in this video, but it ends up being a little lengthy as I do go into a little bit of detail on each of those functions. So we're going to break it up. We'll just do the three functions this video and we'll talk about uh, the options object in another video, how to use the require JS in another video. And, um, you know, finally we'll touch on the building of a chart in another video where we'll use Google charts um, to build a very simple, maybe a bar chart or a pie chart um, and just show how that works within Yellowfin. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I have my data set here that I'm going to build my chart with. We won't be building a chart <laughs> in this video, but um, this is the data that I will be using. As we move over to the charts tab on the far right side, you'll see the JS symbol here. Again, if you don't have that, go back and visit my how to turn on JavaScript chart um, video. There are a few permissions that you have to flip. Make sure you log out and log back in after you give a role um, the JavaScript chart permissions or else it won't show up. So log in, lo log out, log in, and it should appear for you. We'll click on the JavaScript chart here and that will open up our JavaScript editor. As you'll see, we have three tabs up top. We have the JavaScript tab, which is obviously where you will write your JavaScript to generate your chart. We have a CSS tab where you will write your CSS to edit maybe the colors, the different properties of that chart. And we have a preview tab. So as you're writing your JavaScript, you can jump over to the preview tab to see your chart being built or debug your code as you're, um, as you're coding. So back over to the JavaScript chart tab here, let's talk about the three functions that you'll see on the screen. The first one is the generate chart function. This is the only required function uh, within our JavaScript uh, chart editor here. So the reason it's required is we pass a variable into this options object. Uh, excuse me, we pass an object into the, uh, the options variable up there. And that's what you're going to use to be able to grab your data, access some uh, metadata about not only the columns, but metadata about the chart itself to get the height and the width of the screen, etc. So very important there. We're going to explore that options object in the next video, most likely. And you'll see here we have a debugger already coming in, um, already coming in this function. The reason we put it at the top is so you can immediately start to explore your options object once you open up your developer console. Um, we include the chart draw div, so we're calling this the chart draw div, and again that was in the options div selector, and that's where you're going to be drawing your chart, so you will draw into this div. Uh, we have an option here to stop the scroll bars, so if you don't want the scroll bars to appear like when you're putting it on a dashboard or something like that, you can add, you can use this here where you add class, this JS chart no overflow. If you want the scroll bars, just go ahead and comment this out. Um, that'll work just fine. We have the height and width already set here for you if you want to use that. Um, I, again, I highly encourage you to use height and width. That way when you build your charts, they will be dynamic, so as your screen size changes, um, so will your chart. Here's where we grab the process data function, so the outcome of your process data function down here, and that's what we'll pass into the do drawing function, which is the final function down at the bottom where you would draw your actual chart. So the bottom two functions, process data and do drawing, you don't have to use. Um, we put them down there for best practices. It's always good to break up your code into the funct logical functional areas. So process data, we pass the data set variable into here, and that's going to be the data object, which contains all your data. So you can um, manipulate your data as you need to be able to build your chart here. And then again, we set the process data function, we set processed data equal to the process data function. You have to make sure that you return something in this function. If you don't at the bottom say return result or return whatever your result is, um, it's not going to return anything and it won't draw anything. So remember, you got to use the return statement on this function in order to return something here in the do drawing function. Then we have do drawing. This is where you could actually um, do your drawing of your JavaScript chart. 
Um, we pass in the different variables here. So remember height and width from up here. Um, the chart div is that chart draw div here. So just look at what we're passing in here and that's what you'll know. That's how you'll know what you have to work with here. Um, we have the require statement in here. We use require.js when we want to call different libraries in. So D3, for example, is the standard one that we're using um, within this. It's always going to be D3 when you open this up, but you can absolutely change that. And there will be another video on how to change the libraries here, where you find the standard libraries that we come with, etc. cetera. Um, and then you're going to write your code within the try catch function. So you write your code here in the try. You don't have to use the try catch. Um, the reason we have it is this air function that is being called is the standard yellowfin air. So if there was an air drawing a chart in yellowfin, it kind of shows that gray kind of chart thing, and then maybe a sad face, and it says, um, you know, there was an air generating your chart. If you want to use that same air to keep the look and feel of yellowfin, um, that's what this is. That's what this air function is. Again, you don't have to use that. You could write your own custom air function, or you could leave it out altogether if you don't want it. But it is a nice thing for the user if there was a problem for them to see, oh, there was a problem generating that chart. So that about does it for this video. We just wanted to cover these three functions here. Um, you know, I apologize, this is a little bit longer than our normal three-minute video, but I want to make sure we cover in enough, in enough depth um, what these functions do. Stay tuned for our next video. Uh, we're going to explore, more than likely we'll explore the require um, statement here on how to bring in those other libraries. The following video will be on the options object. And finally, we will actually draw a chart. So thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time.